Usually, when a C placer components, the C sharp interaction code is placed below the HTML template. However, there are alternative approaches to implement placer components. In this video, I'll show you two ways how to separate the C sharp interaction code in a different file. Hi, I'm a software engineer with more than a decade of experience on the .NET platform. On this channel, you'll learn all about .NET development. But first, let's learn how to implement components. The concept of having the template and the interaction code within the same file is very common in web frameworks such as React. However, many .NET developers are used to the MVVM pattern where we separate the view or template from the c -sharp interaction code. While I believe having the template and the interaction code within the same file makes a lot of sense for most Blazor components, there are still valid reasons why you want to split them and have the c -sharp interaction code in a different file. When the component template already has many lines of code and splitting it into subcomponents doesn't make sense, you can tidy things up by extracting the c -sharp interaction code into a separate file. The template is responsible for defining the user interface while the C-sharp code is responsible for implementing the component's behavior. Separating them into different files can make it easier to read and maintain the code. It's also a valid reason if you prefer to have the code split into different files. However, in this case, make sure to use the same approach across all the components within the same project, or at least have rules in place when to use which approach. Otherwise, you'll risk mixing up different styles, which makes it harder to maintain the code. We could also talk about reusability and testability, but in my opinion those three reasons are the most important why you want to split the HTML template and the C-sharp interaction code into different files. Now that we understand why we want to split the code, let's learn how to do it. Let's explore the code behind solution first. In this example, we have a to-do item form component that uses the edit form component to add a to-do item to a list of to-dos. Splitting the form into subcomponents doesn't make sense because we do not want to reuse parts of it. Also, this form is very simple, but imagine if it contains a few more fields. First, we create a new C-sharp file and name the class the same as the Blazor component. In this case, we name it to do item form .cs. We follow a naming convention to make the code behind work. An advantage of using the naming convention is that the solution explorer in Visual Studio shows the file as a code behind file. The most important part here is that the class name of the code behind is the same as the name of the Blazor component. Next, we can move all the code within the add code block in the Blazor component into the code behind file. When we navigate back to the component, we can see that the click handlers still work properly. There are handler methods attached to different properties. We also bind the value property of the input text to the new item object in the code behind. Let's start the application to see if the form still works as expected. As you can see, we can add a new to-do item to the list of to-dos. Let's talk about dependency injection. We currently use the add inject directive in the to-do item form component to inject an implementation of the to-do service. We can use the to-do service variable in the code behind. Instead of defining the variable using the add inject directive in the Blazor component, we can also define it in the code behind file. However, the syntax is completely different. Let's remove the add inject definition from the component file and define the variable in the code behind file. We create a private field for the to do service variable. With this approach, we need to use the inject attribute to tell Blazor that we want to get an instance of the service when the component is initialized. 
However, as you can see, we cannot use the inject attribute on a private field. We have to refactor the code and use properties instead. I personally prefer defining dependencies in the template file because it's less code to type and I prefer having private fields for the service variables instead of using properties. But it's good to know that this option exists. The code behind approach is well known for ASP.NET web forms and ASP.NET Core Razor pages, both older .NET technologies. And of course, it's widely used in MVVM-based applications such as WPF applications. The code behind approach is simple, but there is more. Let's explore an alternative approach how to separate the template and the interaction code of a Blazor component. Similar to the code behind approach, we create a new C-sharp file ending in Razor.cs. However, this time, the name of the new file doesn't have to be the same as the Blazor component. We name it to-do form base. Next, we extend the class from component base, making it a Blazor component. Let's move the code from the code behind file to the to-do form base class. We now have a C-sharp class that represents a Blazor component. It has interaction code, but no HTML template. Now we have the to-do item form Blazor component with an HTML template and the to-do form base Blazor component with interaction code. But how do they know each other? The secret is, they don't. We need to tell the to-do item form component about the interaction logic in a different Blazor component using the add inherits directive. We add the line add inherits to-do form base to the to-do item form component to make a link between the two. So how do Blazor components work behind the scenes? We learned that we can place the C-sharp interaction code in an add code block in the same component, or we can extract the C-sharp logic in a separate Razor.cs file. What method we use to define the C-sharp code doesn't matter. In the end, the compiler will turn the interaction code into a C-sharp class and the .NET runtime will execute it. In the end, it's personal preference how you want to implement your Blazor components, but I think it's important to have rules in place when to use which approach. Otherwise, you'll end up with mixed and matched components and a code base that is harder to read and maintain. I hope you learned at least one new way how to implement a Blazor component. Let me know in the comments what approach you like the most. Check out the Blazor playlist to learn more about Blazor development, subscribe for more .NET content and see you in the next video.